And I mean, that's just automatically where our mind goes. But we don't understand that betrayal also comes through abandonment. Somebody left you that you didn't expect to leave. But they left you and that hurt you. That left you broken. That left you in the cycle, the program cycle that you set up for yourself for your safety zone to not trust, to not get attached to the good people that God is sending your way because they might abandon you. And that's how people who have been hurt and traumatized from that experience relate to the reality of life. They don't never get close to anybody because of what they've been through. And then, you know, another form of betrayal is gossip and spreading lies. Have you ever told somebody a secret? Well, you thought it was going to be a secret. You told somebody what was going on in your life that was private. It wasn't meant for the public, but the friend went and told a friend of a friend. Listen, that's how gossip gets started. So they begin to gossip, and the next thing you know, the lies started coming, and you knew automatically who the source was because that was the only person you told. It broke you. Now you don't want to speak to anybody about anything. Now you think everybody's the same way. You think now if you tell Susan about what's going on, Susan is going to run and tell Ben, the church choir, um, the praise team, not everybody going to be looking at you crazy. Well, let me tell you something. That's how the cycle will keep you in a cycle, in a destructive cycle where you can't recover. And it's very important that I release that to you so that now you can identify your cycle. You can identify the things that you keep doing for your safety. And sometimes you don't even realize you're doing it because you've just been used to it for so long. Some people shut down. Some people uh, just come and they don't have an opinion. They don't have a yay. They don't have a nay. they just existing but not living. So that's what we're talking about on tonight is how can we get back to living? How do we get past all of this betrayal. How do we get past the lies when you know everybody not looking at you funny? How do you get past the gossip when you can tell that somebody then told something on you, judging by just how people are looking at you? How do you get past the affair? Your husband then cheated on you, and everybody know it because they know the um the woman that he was with. And she told it. She got pictures. She got selfish. How do you get past that betrayal of an affair when you know that your boyfriend, you thought he was going to propose to you, but instead he dumped you and proposed to another woman? Let me tell you, that's everyday issues for somebody. Because every hour and every minute, somebody in this world is going through that type of hurt, that type of pain, that type of traumatic experience. Some people just can't handle that. And not wired to handle it. So they shut down. So we want to get past this cycle of shutting down and be able to live with the things that we have to go through. You know, be able to live life abundantly and more abundantly. So um, we got to stop setting ourselves up for failure. We got to stop putting people up on a pedestal. We got to stop thinking that people can't do us wrong because they can. And and that's not saying, you know, they can do us wrong, but we don't need to just dwell on that all the time. You know, there's going to be times when, when you're up and then something happens and your world comes crumbling down. You know, what do you do when that, when that pedestal that you have built for yourself comes crumbling down? Everything that you thought was solid, now is shaky, and you're left wondering, what happened? How could this happen to me? Who is this person? You don't know who to trust anymore. And it feels like your life is stopped at the wound, at the pain. You feel like you're still stuck in 1988, and it's 2018. You're still getting up fixing the coffee the same way you would do it back then. You don't want to try anything new. Don't want to do anything new. In this season, you shall do something new in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I speak into your life that you will begin to seek the Holy Spirit for the things that you need to do. 
because we are living in a time where destruction is part of it. And if you don't learn how to live through people betraying you, then you're going to end up missing your life. And when you finally do wake up, life will be passed you by. And you and, and listen, don't let it be a wake up call where there's an accident and you can't walk anymore, but you always in your heart wanted to dance, but you put it off because of what happened to you because of, of a, an experience that happened to you a long time ago. Do the things that you love to do. Get back to living life. Okay? So our first vocabulary word of this evening is traumatic. So what is traumatic? Emotionally disturbing or distressing. In other words, it's shocking, upsetting, harmful, hurtful, painful, agonizing, devastating, mind-blowing, excruciating. If you would to give your emotional pain a level on the level of 1 to 10, some of you will have a 20. Some of you will have a 20. And I mean, you may not say this in public, but in private, you're on a 20. You're on a level 20. You're in that you're still shocked over things that happened long time ago. You're still in the excruciating pain in your heart that you just can't get past. I've been there. I was in excruciating pain for uh, probably 19, 20 years. And I'm only 42. So I lived half my life in this. And I thank God for bringing me out because if he had not brought me out of my agony, if he had not brought me out of my painful, devastating, traumatic experiences, and when I tell you I had some traumatic experiences, I was betrayed by family members. Listen, let me me just tell this testimony right quick, and I didn't even have this written down, but I'm going to tell you this traumatic, how how, how traumatic of an experience it was. Um, I was gang raped. At the age of 13 years old. By people that I trusted. By people that I trusted. They were my cousins. I didn't think they'd ever do me like that. So I spent half my life shut down. To people. And being this mean person. Because that was my safety net. That was my safety net. If I put on this thing. If I be mean. If I let people know if you mess with me. I'll cut you. I'll shoot you. Then they wouldn't bother me. And I wouldn't have to deal with them. That was my safety net. And because I was like that, I didn't have to deal with people like that. But at the same time, I didn't have a life because I was too afraid to get out and walk and experience life. I was too afraid to try something different because I was traumatized. I was stuck in the moment of shockness, not trying to see what God really had for me, not trying to see no further than where I could stand, not trying to get any new experiences because the injury of that to my heart was more painful than that to my body. Now that may sound crazy, but it injured my heart more than it did my body. My body healed, but my heart didn't. So you see what I'm saying? When you go into traumatic experiences like that of betrayal, you have to learn how to recover from it and keep living. It don't mean that it didn't happen to you. It just means now I'm a witness for the Lord. Because I survived to come back and pull somebody else out. Our next vocabulary word is traumatized. It means the subject to lasting shock as a result of emotionally disturbing experience or physical experience. It means to inflict upon. It means that your injury was inflicted emotionally or or physically. Now, I just gave you who did the infliction to me. So that means whatever you're going through, you have to identify who inflicted you, who put that infliction upon you, which means somebody got, got next to your heart. It means that somebody you know, you let your trust down. I mean, you put all your trust in them. That's your insider that we was talking about in part one. You put all your trust in them, not realizing that you was a target. Not realizing that they had seeked you out. They had singled you out because they saw the great person that you was. And they needed to get you in order for them to feel good about who they was. Now, I don't know how you can feel good about raping somebody, but many men and women do. They have cold hearts. They really do. Some of them, I 
forgave those men who did that to me. But there's some of you living out there that have not forgiven, forgiven the people that have done things to you. And we're going to talk about that a little later on. Okay. The next vocabulary word is reset. It means to set again or differently. In this season, you should not be resetted by the enemy. But move forth by faith for your new life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Did you hear what I said? The enemy shall not reset you in this season. Some of you get triggered so easy. I see the people who did me dirty all the time. Some of you get triggered so easy. This is why you can't recover. It's because you keep resetting. You keep reliving that moment. You treat, keep going back to that traumatized moment. You keep trying to explain to yourself over and over, why did it happen to me? Why did he cheat on me? Why did my bank account go empty? Why I have to get robbed? You know, your triggers. You can't keep allowing people to keep you in a box like that. Resetting you time and time again. Not allowing you to be different. So whenever you feel yourself getting reset, you've got to have a way to come out of it. And so that's why I recommend always studying the Bible, the Word of God. There's nothing in there that that has not already been done. There's nothing in there, no, no problem or conflict in there that was not solved. Amen. The next word is trigger. Trigger is a cause, an event, or situation to happen or exist. In other words, to provoke, stir up, or set off. Who provoked you? Who provoked you into feeling like you were less than hu human? Who or what triggered you? Write these questions down so that you can go back and expand on it for your life so that you can start your recovery process today. Who or what made you reset? And relive your pain again and again. Who violated you and inflicted a cause of pain to you. And made you feel less than human. Who exposed you. When we talk about them secrets and lies. Who exposed you. You know let me tell you. David was no stranger. David in the Bible. He was no stranger to betrayal. And you're no stranger to betrayal. It's going to always happen. And long as you have relationships in this world, whether it's business or personal, you're going to go through some type of betrayal. The closer the relationship, the greater the pain of betrayal. And that's just a fact. Um, let us go in the Bible to Psalms 55, 12, and 14. And, it's, and you're going to learn with David. <laughs> you're going to learn about David. What, what David got to say about this thing, y'all. So we're here at Psalms 55, um... Yeah, Psalms 55, 12 through 14 says, For it was not an enemy that reproached me. You hear that? He already tells us it wasn't an enemy. That's why I tell you, when you betray, you're betrayed by the people you trust, the people that you have put trust in, the people that you put way up here and think that they can't fail. You think that they can't do no wrong. You know, you, you just got full of them and not reality. And the reality is we all fall short. <laughs> We've all done somebody wrong. That's the reality of things. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. You know, he's telling you right there. <laughs> and I hate to keep stopping, but he's telling you right there. It wasn't an enemy. If it had been, if it if it had been an enemy, if it had been someone he didn't know, it wouldn't have hurt as bad. It wouldn't have lingered as long. It wouldn't have stabbed as much in the back. You know, it it just would not, it wouldn't have been no type of, it, you probably wouldn't even called it a bruise. You would have called it a criminal act, you know, if it had not been an enemy. For it was, if it, for it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man equal, mm, equal, my God, and mine acquaintance. These are people that you have been around, people, your acquaintance. These are your loved ones. What do you do when your loved ones is constantly setting you up, betraying you? We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Some of you with church members, church family members, out here betraying one another. 
Mm. Walked in the council together. 